What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, we have Alex coming back on. Uh, which back is here, nice. man. Yeah, perfect, man. He's going to hopefully be a nice recurring guest, and we'll have him on a bunch to talk about everything going on. So, so I guess, Alex, what have you been noticing kind of going on in the market right now? Yeah, so, I mean, last time we spoke, we mentioned that, you know, we think inflation is kind of peaking because, you know, energy prices have gone down, uh, real estate prices have gone down, commodity prices have come down. Uh, even, even Elon Musk came out recently and said that he thinks inflation has peaked. And to be honest, that guy, he's in the game enough because of all the raw materials he has to buy for Tesla, right? So they have to buy these Tesla materials six months, eight months, a year in advance, right? Yeah. So these guys know what the prices of these commodities are. These prices, these guys know what it looks like kind of looking forward. So he said they're coming down already, right? For, in the yeah, he said, he market. said, he said they're coming down. He said that yeah. he thinks inflation has peaked. And look, he's not an economist, but he's also the smartest and richest guy in the world. So that has to do with something. Yeah. Uh, and just yesterday, so we're recording this on August 11th. So just yesterday, a CPI number, CPI is the consumer price index, which basically measures inflation. The numbers came out. And for the first time in it feels like a year the inflation number came down. You know, people, yeah. I think the expected number was 8.7% and it ended up being 8.5%. And when that number came in lower than expected, it means that inflation might have peaked and the market just rallied straight up. Every single stock with a bid, doesn't matter if it's AMC, doesn't matter if it's GME. If it had a bid, that bid went straight up. So that's kind of where we're at now. And you know, in terms of how long this is all going to take to fix, you know, the market rallied because traders are betting that, okay, now the Federal Reserve isn't ha doesn't have to be as aggressive with raising yeah. interest rates. The Federal Reserve might even drop interest rates. Yeah. And, you know, some of these companies are slowly going to start to rebound. So that's kind of where we're at now. It's yeah. kind of nuts. It's it's nuts because we had this long period of like a aggressive pullback with I guess a lot of fear and like anxiety. And then in like one day, it kind of felt like sentiment definitely changed a huge amount. I guess the problem is like right now, it's like I think everyone's still scared. I know I'm I'd be scared if I'm like kind of portfolio building because it's yeah. like, how do you how do you buy into this and like not feel like we're gonna have a harsh pullback at some point soon? And I feel yeah. like it, it has to happen. Yeah, I mean, look at if you look at Apple, bro, Apple's like eight percent away from all-time highs i like, know that's what i don't get out. yeah <laughs> yeah like no. just, just like last month it was down like 30 percent on the year and yeah. now it's right back and that's what what i've noticed is uh, based on like a bunch of studies out there this is the most amount of short participants that have shorted the market in like the last 30 years Jesus. So there's so many shorts that are betting on a fucking worldwide collapse. And if the yeah. world doesn't legitimately collapse, then they got to cover up their shares, which leads to a domino effect. We see it in the small cap market all the time. Yeah. And now it's happening in the large cap market. Yeah, I no, I, I think so too. I think for me though, like looking at the spy, like, like to me, like the most like euphoric top is like, okay, now we're back at like 420 on the spy. We have weed stocks that have started to take off. We have meme stocks that are starting to take off. Meme we have don't the, die, bro. We have <laughs> every. Point, I think I should just invest in them. Yeah, there we have. A, there was a stat <laughs> out there that said Facebook is down fifty percent on the year. Tesla is down thirty percent on the year. GameStop is up fifteen percent on the on the year. So yeah. if you invest in the meme stocks, you made money this year. Just, just buy it. the fucking meme basket. Go no, figure, I know, bro. but. I think like that is like a pretty like euphoric top to me. So, it, and this is just my opinion. I think that we're definitely, we're in for some type of pullback. And I think that like, like I learned this from Bao a long time ago, like, because I do long a lot. And the, the first kind of bounce always like, not like the first bounce pattern, but like, if you're looking at like, kind of like, okay, something has tanked that first kind of like bounce that everyone starts to long is yeah. usually fake you know like yeah. i would say the 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 bounces before everyone was just expecting them to drop everyone was just expecting them to drop and they did drop but now we have everyone like longs who are just like like i like i've noticed on twitter like the sentiment has definitely changed like we've gone from bear market sentiment on twitter to 
okay, now we're long again, and now everything's great, and the problems have not been fixed, or, you know, the problems are all fixed, we're all good, and we're ready to go to 500. To me, when I see that sentiment, I'm like, okay, we're, we're due for, like, some type of sharp pullback, I think, like, to catch people off guard, because so many, like, I think we're definitely going to squeeze some shorts out. We might have a day or two or three of this type of kind of like rally, but I think longer term we're in for like some type of pullback. And then once we get into the fall, uh, like, I think we're going to kind of pivot down into elections. Once we kind of get into the fall, uh, then we can start to build like a solid base and get back up. That's just me though. Like, obviously like, you know, we don't always have a crystal ball, but I think we're due for some type of pullback because, you know, and and that's just me. Like I, when I see a bunch of people going long, it always kind of worries me because like in COVID everyone was fighting it, you know, every single person was fighting it. Like the sentiment was like, but it has to go down, but it has to go down, but it has to go down, you know, because everyone felt that after we had that drop, that, that whole collapse was coming, that that whole thing was coming. But now I feel like people are like, Oh, but it has to go up, but it has to go up, but it has to go up. So I think we need to kind of change that sentiment to people starting to fight. Like my biggest long gains are going to be when people are fighting all the time, hundred percent when people are like, Oh, but this is the top, but this is the top, but this is the top, but this is the top. Right. And it just keeps going and going and going. Cause everyone feels the same way. And I think that we need to kind of move a little bit lower uh, in order to really get that, that, that rally in, but I mean, you gotta go lower. You got, if look, if you're thinking about the long-term perspective of how any market goes higher or how things rebound is stocks need to go down, trap shorts, and then continue to make their move higher. Right. So right now it's almost essentially like, you know, they're trapping the longs, right? So yeah, exactly. As market participants, bro, I'm an optimist, right? I want the market to go up. I want there to be a bull market because the more of a bull market that there is in large caps, the more of a bull market there is in small caps that we trade. The, yeah. the more crazy the large cap bull market is, the shittier stocks run in small cap world. So I'm, one, I'm an optimist. I want this shit to go to spy to a thousand, right? Oh yeah, me too. That's what I want. So to make that happen, we need to go lower. We need to trap shorts. We need to convince them that, hey, you know, the world is crashing again. And then as we saw, you know, last quarter, all of these big companies, they had amazing earnings. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what we think about recession. It doesn't matter what we think about depression. So long as companies like Apple and Microsoft and Google make money, the market's going to go up. I think the S&P 500 is like 8% Apple. So, so long as Apple continues to make money, that's going to dictate the entire market. That's so, not going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. You never know, bro. You never know. Elon might come out with the Tesla phone. Yeah. The Tesla phone might fucking kick Apple's Apple's ass on the phone. And then all yeah. of a sudden, what they'll do is they'll change the weight from Apple to 8% to Tesla to 8% and they'll fix it. You know, the yeah, game is exactly. rigged, bro. I guess, the, I guess my biggest thing is like, I agree because the market needs to come down to kind of cycle out the trapped longs and all that. But What's going to happen? Like I, we need, like, a, I feel like nothing's going to change in the next like six months. That's going to cause an event that will create this kind of panic, which is like not necessarily a good thing. Cause I feel like the longer we rally, the longer that we're going to end up in a. The thing is, bro, there has to be just like in small caps, there has to be a catalyst. So for example, God forbid, uh, China goes to war with Taiwan. Yeah, and exactly. Taiwan, that's going to be a catalyst. Yeah. But if nothing happens until 2023, the Federal Reserve is probably going to lower interest rates. They're going to met, make debt cheap again. And people are going to start the cycle of borrowing money that they don't have to buy stocks, to buy houses, to buy crypto, to buy whatever the hell they want. And the game is going to start all over again, right? So there has to be a catalyst for things to go down. And that could be another war. That could be company earnings going down. That could be mm-hmm. anything. But in from what I've seen right now, the only catalyst for things to get better is that the Fed potentially is going to lower interest rates in 2023. Yeah. And, and, you know, the thing is, is that I don't really worry so much about Catalyst because it always comes like it's weird how it works, but like there's always something for like, there's always a reason to to blame price action for, you know, there's always going to be a reason to, to blame it on. I don't really worry so much about Catalyst because like it always just seems to come, you know, like it just, it's like, oh yeah, like another pop, but, but we have this, this, this to worry about. Like humans just will make fucking shit up at the end of the day, you know, like 
sometimes on CNBC, I'm watching and I'm like, okay, this is not the reason the market has gone down today, you know, but they're just going to always find reasons to. Yeah, you know, CNBC is for entertainment purposes. Yeah, also, exactly. Bro. You know, if you do the opposite of what they say, that's how you make money. Yeah, no, 100%. And funny, so, so, Alex, I have a question for you. So, because I get this question a lot from guys in MIC too, but, you know, how do you go about in like times like this, especially when it's like turbulent or things are going up, going down, how do you add yourself to like your long-term portfolios and stuff like that? Like, how do you even judge that and, and, you know, kind of add more pieces or take some off or whatever? Sure. So, so I actually want to do like a full episode on like longer term, you know, capital investing. But the number one thing is to be able to buy these things, you need to have cash on hand. That's the number one thing is what I've noticed is a lot of people, they don't have cash, bro. Like, for example, like, let's say, let's say you got $5,000 in the bank but you're spending $5,000 a month on credit card bills, on rent, on whatever the hell it is. When the opportunity does come that Apple is at 130, you can't fucking put any money into it because you waste all your money. So the big thing to do is to accumulate cash, right? I think having about a 10% cash position yeah. is a good amount. So let's say you got a like your, your entire net worth is a hundred grand you should at all times have at least 10% cash in the bank, maybe even more, uh, just to be able to have in case of an emergency, just to be able to have invested in case like you have an opportunity. And now that number changes, if you got a million dollars, it's probably safe to have 100K in the bank just waiting so that when shit does go down, all right, I'm going to deploy 50K here, I'm going to deploy 20K here, whatever it may be. So the number one thing is you got to make sure you got cash on hand. So it was actually really funny because... One of our moderators, the bear, uh, I was trading the meme stocks uh, this week and he's like, oh, like, are you going to buy like a new fancy watch after these meme stocks? And I'm like, listen, bro, I'm not in the mode to buy any more toys. Yeah, I am in the mode to stockpile cash because the yeah. next thing coming down is real estate. And the only way to make money is to have cash. The thing yeah. with real estate is you could borrow a lot of money. So for example, if you want to buy a million dollar property, you only need $200,000. The bank is going to lend you the rest. So my job right now is to gather as much cash as possible yeah. so that when the next sector goes down, that's when I'm going to be buying. So yeah. when all these stocks went crazy down, like, you know, Tesla was at 600, uh, Apple was at 130, uh, you know, Amazon was at like 102. I had cash on hand. I had cash on hand to load. And like I mentioned in the last podcast, a lot of people are down 30% on the year on their long-term holdings. You know, I'm up two, 3%. It's not fucking life-changing, but it's way better than being down 30% because I'm buying when people are panicking. Yeah. So the way to do it is the same way we do everything is buy when it's red, sell when it's green, buy when people are panicking, when people are calling for a recession, when people are calling for a depression, when people are calling for World War III, that's when you buy. When it is the scariest to buy, that's when you buy. Now, it doesn't yeah. mean buy the fucking meme stocks. Obviously, we're joking. But companies that, for example, I use an iPhone every single day. So you better believe I'll be buying Apple. That's just the way it is, right? And obviously, it's not investment advice. You got to do what you got to do. But for me, I'm just buying stocks that I use on an every single day basis. I'm buying stocks that have proven to last the storm. You know, there's companies out there that, you know, got hyped up like Moderna, like Pfizer, like whatever the hell it is. COVID's over. So I'm not going to be investing in those stocks. I'm going to be investing in the stocks that, you know, have long-term potential and always like right now, right now, I can't justify buying Apple again. I can't justify buying Tesla at 900. I am selfishly waiting for another market pullback for them to trap the shorts, to be able to get better prices because yeah. now shit is extended again. Right. Yeah, exactly. So have cash on hand is number one. So my big thing right now is I'm stockpiling as much cash as possible to deploy in real estate in three to six months when, you know, shit starts to get a little bit crazy. Real estate's starting to slow. It's around here, at least. I'm starting to see a lot of houses sit there for a long, there's still houses on the market, which, yeah. you know, you go back six months, you put a house on the market for a million, it'd be gone the next day for 2 million. It was insane. Yeah, man. Even, even me, bro. Cause I, I was moving, I moved out of my old place and I got this new place here and I was looking at places and dude, no exaggeration. If you don't give them exactly their asking price plus more, 
There's no joke, 25 other people that will take it for above asking price. So that's kind of where I was at. And I kind of ended up buying at the top or like I'm renting right now. I ended up renting at the top because I had to, I was going to be homeless. But for me, I don't think that shit is going to go down as bad as 2008. I don't think there's going to be mass foreclosures. I don't think yeah. people are going to be fucking broke forever. I don't think that because the qualifications of getting these houses have gone up so much. It is, you got to be qualified as hell. You got to have the income. You got to have everything. So I don't think that's going to happen like crazy, maybe a 20% dip. And that's going to be plenty enough for me. Right. Cause like exactly. we talked about last time, Harry is buy it now when the interest rates come down next year, refinance it for lower and that's it. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, I find the uh, qualifications are a lot crazier. I think the only thing though, like, and I, I think I talked about this before is that I was listening to a podcast here in Canada and he he said like um, before kind of the pandemic, before the real estate bubble uh, picked up, um, you know, 20% of his transactions were these kind of reverse mortgages. So people were basically taking out loans against the equity of their houses. Yeah. And um, which, you know, that's that's fine. He said during COVID now, like 50 to 80 percent of his transactions are now those reverse mortgages in Canada. I don't know what that is in the U.S. or like how you go about that. But a yeah. lot of people have been taking, uh, you know, loans against their houses. So if that kind of falls and let's say we lose, you know, 20 percent in value, I do wonder what happens to those people. Where is it just like what what kind of like happens to your loan? Like, do you need to like like put money back in or are you still it's underwater? Yeah. You're underwater. So yeah. Like the value is like underwater. So like that to me is a little crazy because like you could have potentially a lot of people trapped because, you know, for a long time I was like, where are people getting this money? Where are people getting this money? You know, like, especially in Canada too. Cause like Canada isn't like the U S in, in terms of like economy wise. Right. Yeah. Like there are like a couple good jobs here and that's really it. Like if you're not a doctor or you're not a lawyer or let's say a stock trader, cause like, you know, <laughs> I'm a stock trader here. <laughs> if you're not one of those things, you know, it's pretty difficult to, to bring in like a lot of money. So um, a lot of people are buying new boats, new trailers, new, new cars. Like I was seeing it here and I was kind of wondering, but it does make sense that a lot of people were kind of going to the bank and saying, Hey, I want to take a, a loan out against the, the value of my house. And they just expect that when they sell their house, they're just going to get they all that money. Know, back. Bro. They might be taking that loan against their house and buy more Bitcoin. And then yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You, you never know, like Bitcoin to the moon, baby. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's another one. I think Bitcoin, uh, that's down. That's due for a pullback too. That baby cannot bounce. Dude. Yeah, the thing is, Bitcoin is built on hype, bro. So they need to get people hyped up about it. And if everyone is broke and everyone has no money, like I was actually talking to this about my, I was talking to this uh, with my dad the other day, and I was explaining to him, I was like, look, if people, if gas prices are up, rent prices are up, food prices are up, every type of expense is up. Yeah. How the hell are you going to have any disposable income to? put it to work. If you're spending all of your money on gas, if you're spending all your money on rent, if you're spending all your money on groceries, you got no, you're barely getting by. Yeah. If you're barely getting by, you got no time to even buy some of these meme stocks. You got no time to even buy some of these uh, cryptos. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's not, it's not easy. And it always goes back to the same fact is stockpile cash right now, stockpile cash to be able to deploy at an opportunity that you see fit. Yeah. I had a really good conversation with a guy. Um, he works in crypto. Uh, I forget what company he is. It's he's a client of mine, and we were just chatting about it. And he was saying how kind of like that, like the hype of crypto is almost like gone. And I feel like we're at this period now where we might start to see the companies that will actually have like value. And like maybe there are some that there obviously have to be some cryptocurrency companies that are gonna do something in the future. But I think now it's like that speculate, that excitement isn't there anymore. The world's changed. I mean, it's changed a lot since COVID, right? People don't have the time to even like care. And like a lot of people feel like they're not smart enough or they missed the boat. And, you know, so I think, I think it's going to have a much harder time bouncing than people think. And, and who knows, man, who knows where we end up in like six months. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The thing is about stocks, they have institutional money behind it. So you got like the Saudi trillionaires, you got the multi multi billionaires in Dubai that have all this cash, all these oil tycoons. Yeah. They're not allowed to be investing in Bitcoin because there's no regulation. So yeah. all that capital gets deployed into the U.S. market. So the U.S. markets, although are still down, 
You know, it's the strongest markets in the world. It's the most investable market in the world. So that's where most of the capital is going to be deployed, you know? Yeah, absolutely. No, 100%. So how do you guys feel right now about like small caps? What's going on with, uh, how are you guys trading? How's, you know, market sentiment, you think? I mean, as we're talking, BBY is still bouncing again. I mean, right, things are strong right now, right? So how are you yeah. guys doing? Yeah, Harry, you go for it. Okay, so for me this week, uh, it's been a little bit slower for me due to kind of like lack of pumps, like, I found that this week has been like yesterday we saw like everything fade. And the only thing that really kind of popped was uh, AERC. That one I ended up getting in. I found that, that to nice. me, it was just too suspicious the way it kind of dropped. So I took some at like 570 and then I ended up issuing a frigging PR, which was In fucking like, hey, yeah. luck, that luck was, meets opportunity, man. That was just luck. So um, I thought maybe we could build back to like red to green in that situation. But anyway, they issued this PR. So you like sell over like previous highs. That's it. But I mean, other than that, uh, I found that I found for me, at least like um, compared to the week when I was kind of away, it's definitely a little bit slower this week for me. And it's not necessarily because of uh, like that the market isn't strong because like things are strong. We've seen bounces on like BBBY. We've seen bounces on the mean stock, stuff like that. But for me, I've noticed that with the day one runners, like they're getting like, and this just to me, they're getting like a little bit weaker. It's getting a little bit kind of easier for shorts other than that PR, which was like that. I mean, that was like the odds of that dropping, like who knows, but um, I found that it's been getting like a little bit weaker. Like, like we haven't seen like, uh, things been able to run like we saw like with TBLT or things been able to run like we saw with like the other stocks that were just strong and had a bid like every single day you know you could rely on those stocks to have a bid now it's kind of like um, the day one runners are just testing high it's not really breaking out of that kind of range and going back down lower um, other than a couple that have been like super super tight range but um, I have seen it getting like, it's not necessarily weaker, but it's not necessarily stronger either. So to me, I'd rate it kind of like medium where like, we're not, we don't really have crazy runners, but we are getting some action and we are getting a lot of stocks kind of coming up. So for me, I'd rate it like, kind of like neutral. It's not like the end of the world. Hopefully we can finish this week out with some crazy pumps, you know, insane to the moon. No, I'm just fucking <laughs> with you, but you know, um, to, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that we can see like a bit more action, a bit more range. The range has been kind of capped, I find. Yeah, pumps have, oh, pumps have been really weak. And that's something I've noticed is like, obviously, you know, a lot of us know guys who push stocks or try to whatever. And it, I just feel like they can't get momentum. And my biggest thing right now is just like you said, it's range. So it's really hard to, it's really hard to, I think, size into anything uh, responsibly while there just isn't the range, right? BBBY, the meme stocks have been a bit of a blessing this past week because they all obviously came back up from like six bucks or 12 bucks and ran. Now we have a bunch of meat on the bone, which is nice. But I think as a short, you know, as long as you're just kind of building into a position right now and you're like adding to winners rather than kind of like scaling into these like grinders that keep kind of happening. I yeah. think the market, I think the market for shorts has been okay. I think it's been a pretty solid like last two weeks. Um, which means, you know, we, I think we're still due for that, like, kind of like F you runner. And I, I feel like we've been saying it for a long time now, but at some point we, I think we're going to get that thing that just completely lights us up. Cause I mean, large caps, obviously everything's running, everything's doing good. And I think at yeah. some point we will get that. Yeah. It's all based on speculation money. I, I talk about this in the videos is like the stocks that we trade, these small cap stocks are all based on hype. They need like a catalyst. They need people to speculate on them. Right. And when the entire market is down in the drain, when the entire market's crashing, there's not much people to speculate on these stocks. So now that the market has slowly rebounded a little bit, obviously it's not rebounded a lot, but it's rebounded yeah. enough to get people to say, all right, I'm feeling confident in these markets again. I'm feeling confident to, for lack of a better word, gamble on these small cap stocks. And yeah. then we're getting these crazy moves. In terms of a giant runner, I mean, we had HKD. The problem with HKD is I don't really know anyone that got stuck short. I don't really have know retail participation. Have bars like money. that. <laughs> and yeah. as we get closer to the end of the year, as you guys know, November is zombie month, yeah. right? November is zombie month. So that's gonna probably be when we get some crazy move. But you know, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. You know, it's yeah. these are when people are the most caught off guard, when people least expect exactly. it is when this is going to happen. So in terms of like overall trading, man, 
I mean, dude, I can't complain. It's not what it used to be last year, but like the MIC process works, man. People don't, people don't understand that just being able to walk away at 1030 might be that missing piece that you've been kind of lacking or maybe following the side plays, the sympathy plays. Maybe that's what you've been training the hot stock short every single day. So our process has been proven to work. And the reason why our process has been proven to work is because I stick to it every single day. My job as an educator, my job as a mentor is to show you what is possible if you follow our strategy. So it is in my best interest to follow the strategy because the strategy is proven to work. And by me proving that it works, other people can make money. So it's still a great year for me. I'm still making yeah. a lot of money this year. I'm still doing really well this year. And now with that money, instead of last year, blowing it on stupid shit this year, while we're in recession, while we're in quote unquote depression, these are the best times to get rich. This is the best possible time to make money because everything is at a discount. So I'm trying to just whatever I make from trading, put it to the side and put it into other types of deals all around, you know? Yeah. That's the best way to do it because I think people get too reliant on their trading income. And like, as we've seen, especially on Twitter, as of like lately, it's gotten a lot pretty quiet because a lot of people who made a lot of money in 2021, 20, or 2020, 2021, they either bought a bunch of expensive shit, houses, cars, which is great. You do, do whatever you want. But when, like you said before, when the market slows down and you're, you're not getting that same income, it's very stressful. Like how can you- A lot do? of people got lucky, bro. A lot of people had no strategy. A lot of people had no process. A lot of people had no stops and they were rewarded for being an idiot. And as you can see, bro, I'm confident to say this, 90% of the traders that made money in 2020, 2021, they're gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Gone, gone, gone. Yeah, easily. Yeah, I mean, like, even if you look on Twitter, like, there's not as many people on FinTwit right now as there were in 2020, 2021. Everyone used to be an expert, bro. You guys remember, everyone was an expert. Oh, my God, look at me. I'm making this. I'm making that. Fuck you guys. I'm a fucking beast. All of a sudden, bro, all of a sudden, now they're like, oh, shit, I just lost 80% of my, I don't want to say who it is on Twitter, but there's a guy that, you know, shows his execution every day, shows his win percentage every day, and his account is down 80%, you know what I'm saying? But his execution is 100%, go figure, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like these guys should, are, and these guys are trying to teach people how to make money. These guys got lucky for the last two years, and you know what? I feel bad for the people that follow these guys and think that they're actually legit because the saddest part is these guys, they could, they probably have enough money to last a storm, but their students, the people that are trying to learn from them are going broke. Yeah. They're going broke, man. So I'm very proud of what we have at MIC. I'm very proud that our members are staying consistent. I'm very proud that, you know, we're all still making money. And, you know, that brings us to the next fact, which is the meetup. The meetup is next week. And yeah. this is an unbelievable opportunity to meet me, to meet Bao. If you're struggling in trading, if you're not really doing well in trading, if you're kind of lonely in trading, you know, we started MIC because Bao and I were very lonely. We were making so much money and we're like, yo, what the hell is the point, right? What is the point? Why are we even doing this? Like, what is it? And then MIC kind of saved our life because now we get to help and mentor people like, bro, I would have never met you guys if it was no. not for MIC. I would have never had a fucking blacking out with James in New York city. I'm going to be hairy. Like it's going to be a great time uh, just seeing each other, but you know, I'm really excited for the meetup and I'm really excited that even in these turbulent market times, yeah. even in these times of uncertainty, you know, we're still staying clear to the MIC mission. Yeah. And it's always been to help and mentor traders. Yeah. hundred percent. I love it. Definitely agree. It's probably a yeah. great place to kind of wrap yeah, up. Is there anything else you guys want to? Kind I of mean, if this about? comes out before the meetup, which I think it should, go to myinvestingclub.com slash meetup. It's 100% free. We're losing money renting a venue. We're losing money renting the food. We're losing money, everything. So like, this is probably going to be our last free meetup, guys. So yep. this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to meet us, to hang out with us, to drink with us, to party with us, uh, and talk about trading, which is our favorite subject. Awesome. Exactly. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, yeah, thank you guys. Thanks everyone. And uh, we'll definitely see you and everyone for the next one. Later.